The corporations have not yet won. Community still exists in small tucked away areas not often talked about. Artists and businesses beginning to thrive in places thought to be defeated. Dave, I like to call him David Francis. And I, Tom Maslowski, are here to give you a glimpse of what's going down in downtown J-Town. We're going to be interviewing all of our favorite musicians, artists, and business owners that give every ounce of themselves into what they do. We are back at Third City Sound. It's been quite a it's been a couple weeks since we recorded episode 26. It feels great to be back in here. How are you, Dave? I am doing better than last time you asked me. Is that good? <laughs> well, that is very fancy. Just five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> We're on our second go around, you know, but uh, I think it's going to be uh, pretty great. How was editing all day today? Um, it was interesting. You're not, yeah. You're not liking it? I'm not you? enthused about it, but I don't want to say that publicly. <laughs> so I love my job editing audiobooks. It's got to be a little rough. It's got to be a little rough. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. So... <laughs> But we have with us tonight a special guest in the studio, Mr. Ernie Hendrickson. Howdy, fellers. What's happening, man? Good evening. Oh, just uh, glad to be here is all. Just tickled. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad to have you, and thanks for making time in your crazy schedule. I know you just got back from a gig tonight. I did. I um, did. And you were saying it's it's in one of the three Palaces, as you put it earlier. That's right. That's right. Because it's Palace. Palace Heights, and Palace Heights is Bill, Park, right? Heights, Hills, and Park. Oh, right. That's right. Palace Hills. That's right. <laughs> and I live in in Park, which, uh, but I live in unincorporated Palace Park. You know, so like we're kind of the scum down there. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also allowed to have bonfires, though. Is that right? Well, I don't know. I mean, unincorporated. You could just you could have. I think they're just kind of cool with ground fires out there. <laughs> It's not technically. Nobody legal. really cares what we do down right. there. That's <laughs> one of the beauties of it. Right. And where were you playing at? Uh, I play at a restaurant called The Harvest Room. I've been doing it almost since they opened, so over four years now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a long stretch. Um, it's every Monday? Every Monday night, 7 to 9, yep. Oh, man. By the time I get out of work, I would, I would be getting there at 9 o'clock. Well, sometimes we stretch it a little bit. If you walked in the door, it'd be 9.30. Okay. <laughs> what time is the kitchen open till in that joint? Nine. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> we'll do a to-go order. I'll get it. To, it'll be fine. It'll be great. Um, can you give us a, a little sample of what I missed this evening? I'd love to. We'll break into song here. What is this first one called? I'll, I'll do one. This one's called The Losing Blues. All right. And a beat up car Thought my degree was gonna take me far Well I couldn't find a job But I found this bar Trying to lose these blues and blues I need a new song To help me along I need a new dance I need another chance I'm down to my last card I didn't know that it would be this hard I need the nine o'clock news So I don't feel so bad about these blues Well, I'm staying at home with my mom and dad I ain't complaining, it's a pretty nice pad Got the basement to myself like I've always had And I got the blues and blues Couldn't believe it myself, but she said yes Somehow my luck could turn around, I guess Until she called it all off Saying she was stressed about the losing blues I need a new song 
need a moonbeam I need a new dream One winning hand I need a brand new plan This song needs a new verse Somehow I got to break this curse You know I've been trying to lose these losing blues Put these hands to some good use Well this cop pulled me over as I left the bar Said he smelled something funny coming out of my car Now I'm sitting on the cold floor thinking hard about the losing blues is gonna turn around The last will be first And the loss will be found And you ain't gonna see me With my head hung down Singing these losing blues That sun's gonna fly around once more I'm gonna make it to that other shore and Trouble ain't gonna follow me no more When I lose these losing blues When I lose these losing blues I'm gonna put on Listen to that sustain. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's still going. That is a sustain. great guitar, man. You know, and I, I cannot help but think about Willie Nelson when I see that guitar because you have the beginnings of the exact same holes, like the the, the strumming center right there. That, it, it looks cool, though. Well, yeah, actually, this hole, uh, I mean, I know I'm just talking about it and people listening can't see it, but this hole right here that you see, yeah, is actually another piece of wood. So I've already I've already worn <laughs> through. You can see how the colors different, right? Yeah. yeah. I never even asked this guy to do it. I took took this guitar in for something else, and he gave it back to me with this piece of wood underneath the hole. Which wow. Had he not done that, I would be more on my way to a Willie guitar. You know? yeah. <laughs> which I think there's something to be said about that. And you guys have a very similar laid back style. I mean, like you know, just the laid backness of it. I think is. Is really great, man. I um, I've only seen you play twice, and they were both at Chicago Street Pub, and both times were just as good as that one was right there. Thank you very much. I really, I really dig the demeanor. Everything just kind of comes out. It's like, it's there's there's precision going on, but it just sounds like you're kind of just laying back and doing whatever. It's it's a really great. I appreciate sound. Appreciate that very much. How long have you been at this? <laughs> every <Stereo. laughs> every five years or so, or ten years, I I have to keep like reminding myself that it's been that much longer um, <laughs> so i'm gonna be 40 here in a couple weeks um i know i got a guitar when i was 10 for sure i there's a picture of me with it for my 10th birthday what was it it was just like a, a harmony a little jc penny catalog probably 35 dollar guitar you know sure the harmonies yeah mm -hmm. uh, i guess it's a uh, must be a three quarter size, yeah, three yeah. quarter size guitar. Uh, and so that thing just got beat around and kicked around and plucked until it had probably two strings left on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's really what I started learning on is just like two strings, you know. <laughs> I remember I could do, you know, like the blues, um, right? That thing, you know, it narrows down the choices. Yeah, you right? could do presidents of the United States of America. Oh, okay. <laughs> are they are they a two string guitar band? They had uh, one was three strings, and really? the other was two strings. I did not know that. They had five strings between the two of them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I guess <laughs> the get a bass and the bass guitar. And didn't isn't nice. that what um, Keith Richards did too? He just had the four middle strings. I think Keith just took off the low E. Oh, okay. Okay. And then did like a G open G tuning. I think that was what he did a lot. I see. I yeah. did not know that. So you yeah. obviously are quite knowledgeable as well as talented. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could go with either one of those, but if if I'm coming off that way, let's run with it. Let's go. <laughs> um, you know, and I know you did say that you 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 do teach a little bit as well. I have some students that come to my house. I don't. I used to teach a lot of a lot of different places over the years, um, and it's always just been something that. I think for me has worked well with, you know, being a performer and, and a writer, 
you just, you know, there's some downtime and, and it also helps you, I think with the craft, you know, to, to be able to help someone else along with it too, you know, kind of changes your perspective a little bit. Absolutely. See it from a different way. Yeah. Yeah, that too. And and honestly, I, I think just the sheer repetition of saying those same things over and over again to different students kind of helps you to practice those same things too. Sometimes. It does. It does. So you're a teacher, which I just learned. Yeah. And and so, you know, you uh here we are, you know, living a pretty similar existence, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's uh it's you know, playing and teaching and it's not a bad way to live, you know. No. Uh I mean it, I'm not incredibly profitable, I guess, or whatever, but I get to do what I love every day. I, right. If you see pictures of me, you know that I have plenty to eat. I have clothes, a car. <laughs> I mean, everything is everything is going pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty happy every day, and it's great to be able to try to give some of that to people. I don't think um, there's enough musical heroes out there to provide that sort of a release and a happiness and, you know, I remember when we were all growing up, that was what everyone was talking about. You know, that was when you got home with the new CD that day from the new album or the new tape, I guess when we were kids, sure. there was, it was like Christmas there. You couldn't wait to get home and hear what they had been putting together and see the artwork and read the lyrics. And um, I'm just glad that even though we aren't famous, we still do it. And yet. Give it yet. <laughs> yet. 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 You know, but I, I think we give it our all. I, I think guys like you really, you know, are genuine artists and musicians and you're 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 playing you're playing what you feel, you're playing what you love and Yeah, absolutely. I mean I fame, you know, for whatever that's worth I I don't know I mean, it's certainly when you're young you think maybe that's gonna happen to you when you go into music or something or you think that's possible or or that might be one of the you know the things that's that's shiny about it, you know, but when you start walking down this road of of music, I mean, if you're if you're open to it, I think by the time you get anywhere with it, that whole idea of fame is is pretty low on the rung of, you know, think reasons to aspire towards it, you know. I mean, it's uh it's rewarding in its own way. Yes. You know? What way would that be for you? Well, he said it's rewarding, Tom. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, what, what keeps you going every day? What makes I mean, I'm you trying really... to see the cup half full here, okay? We're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know I do it. For me, it is a religion. It is my hobby. It's. I thought we weren't going to talk religion. <laughs> well, you, you said know, we were loosely, going to keep this light. Loosely, loosely. <laughs> you know, but... musical atheist. <laughs> I only believe in myself. No. Um <laughs> <laughs> that's why I do it though you know sure. I love meeting people sure. and talking yeah. to people and no. hearing all this great music yeah. it's it's a lifestyle I, I, feel I, like... I was going to say that it's a lifestyle <laughs> yeah I, that's exactly what I guess what I'm what I'm trying to say in so many words I guess there's not really one one thing you can say about it to really <clears throat> you know explain what it is that it that is rewarding about it but sure. you know along it's... the way you you know you're you know you're you're just you're 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 realizing you know that this is your life that you're living and and that you know the music that you play is a reflection of that you know and so and so what is your writing process are those was that song about a personal experience <laughs> well that that song the losing blues is not recorded on one of my i i i had i need to do a new album i've i haven't recorded since what 2013 oh wow but uh I I was working on a series of songs about I I called it the Loser Trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why but uh, that's the you know the thing that started kind of uh inspiring me but you know uh, this this road of being a musician can certainly knock you down too you know yeah. I mean you, <laughs> I think when you're young you do feel like success is going to be a little bit more easily attainable you know and you have that kind of natural belief in yourself that that just kind of you know comes along with youth sure so you know you you get a, a little bit away from that and you still keep trying to walk this road and uh you know you you get little brushes with things but you know you better be ready for the long haul if you want to 
keep at it, you know, because it's got its ups and downs. And um, so the losing, the losing blues and the loser trilogy was just a little bit of a way to kind of make light of, of all that stuff that happens to us. Sure, because you're, you're going to go through those thoughts and emotions, even right. if they're, even if it's not true. You know, like I think it would be horrible if you quit playing music. Like, I mean, oh man, we don't get to see or hear him do anything anymore. So I, don't, I think it's. You you have to have songs like that. So you have to kind of make light of the subject because otherwise it's really easy to get super caught up in that and and end up maybe giving up or what, for whatever reason. You know, I think everyone's got a different idea of like how you were saying what what is the fame? What is that? What does success as a musician look like? Right. Um, right. And it's not always going to be what you thought, but I don't I don't think anything in life is what exactly you think. And I uh, appreciate those little hidden treasures that you get from time to time. <laughs> Definitely. What up? Uh, were you always a music fan? How did you get that guitar when you were 10? Is that something like your parents were like, oh, geez, this kid really needs a guitar? They must have noticed that, I think my mom told me that when I would get into a car, I would always want to turn on the radio. So they, they noticed that I was interested in music. I liked to listen to it. Um, and then I think there was maybe like a toy guitar sitting around the house too, you know, before mm -hmm. that. And I, I probably enjoyed that a little bit, you know? Um, so I'm glad that they picked up on that. You know, I'm a father now too. So I, I realize that, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's things that you got to do to help your little kiddo along, you know? Sure. <laughs> Notice what their interests are and try to nurture yeah. them. Right. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Oh, I'm just, just one. I'm Brent. I can't, I can't say brand new, but I just have a 15 month old daughter. That's pretty brand new. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just getting, learning the ropes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Are you a father? I am not. Okay. I'm married, but I'm not a dad. All right. But, um, no, D I'm Dave? not. No. I'm the only dad in this room. <laughs> in the room. In the room, yes. Go downstairs. There's a couple, I think. Okay. Yes. All, all of our musician friends have families now, right? Me and uh, Dave and I are like behind the times here. Okay. All I right. don't know. It's a pretty common thing amongst musicians to not be having the family. Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends. Depends. Yeah. Case by case basis. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, you know, we always talk about on this show, a lot of people's first band or music they ever got into playing was metal. Mm. What was your initial favorite style of music? All right. And you well, can't say metal. That's taken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I started out, um, so I was, okay, I was 87 when I was 10. So I mean, Guns N' Roses were the kings of the universe, you sure. know. Uh, I was certainly into Slash. Yes. I thought he was, and still do think he's a bad dude. Yeah, he yeah. is awesome. Yes. Um, I mean, for my money, I don't. I don't know of many better guitar solos or any more rocking guitar solos than Sweet Child of Mine in Paradise City. And, you know, it was a reason they were famous, man. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of energy in that, which I was drawn to. Um, I also liked worse stuff like Poison. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I did too. Poison, Van Halen, and Kiss. I did. Yeah, yeah. Though, yeah, definitely. Only one um, of those bands sucks. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I grew up worshiping Eddie Van Halen, so yeah, he was yeah. he was the stuff. Yeah, Van Halen. Um, you know, I grew up in Rockford, so Cheap Trick. Yeah, you yeah. know, grew up listening to that, and uh, I think that was. Did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so bad eighties yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like the rest of us, then some sort of like we're aggressive, children, like yeah, we're children of the late seventies. I mean, what are we supposed to? You know, that was that was what. What are kids today going to be? Well, again, that goes back to my whole, you know, monologue about musical heroes and things. Uh -huh. They listen they, to what we listen to. Um, though I say, you, for the kids you teach and stuff, I recently had a conversation with a, my friend's little sister, and she's a senior. I was like, what, what are, the, are the guitar players still cool? Mm -hmm. She said, no, it's all about the DJs now. Yeah, I mean, guitar a lot of the music doesn't even cool have anymore. guitar in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you talk about having guitar students. It's a good thing people are still listening to Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was, a lot of the students I get are not, I mean, they, they do like the DJ stuff too. Like, um, oh, is it Skrillex? 
Ugh. And like Square Pusher is actually a really good one. Dead Mouse. Uh, Dead Mouse. Uh, which some of their stuff is okay too. I don't care. I mean, make music. That's fine. Music, whatever. Music. Yeah. But there's no one that uh, anyone's really like looking up to right now. Uh, they would keep asking for Beatles and Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. and Black Sabbath mm-hmm. or or whatever. And um, you know, I, I would always ask them about that. Like, why that, that there's like there's nothing out there. And so I really feel like um, something I want to do is just try to tell people about the musicians I've run into here at Chicago Street because I think. Everyone is really top notch. Even if it's not your style or your taste, or you don't like it or whatever, someone is going to love it. There is great music taking place here. And I, I feel like it's way long overdue that we start telling people about it. Well, yeah. I mean, Chicago Street Pub is one of the, the few places that tells you, you know, they want you to play your own music, you know, and they don't book cover bands. No. That's just because Triz is cheap, though. Well, I, I get, I know. I mean, there, yeah, I, I understand that that's part of it. I know, I know another place that didn't want to pay the royalties. Well, but that's stuff. not true. But he does, he does. I was pay. joking. He does, yeah. <laughs> he, he got hit with that. He's going to kill okay. you for saying that. Yeah, oops. <laughs> he doesn't listen. Next to topic. Shit. No, but the, no, but I know Triz too personally, and I know yeah. that he really values artists, you know, oh, yeah. people that are trying to. I mean, for sure, their own thing, I don't know so. of anybody, him and John Simpson, that put more into the local music scene. Yeah, it's, it's from from the like the promoter perspective and organizing events and stuff. Are you, are you telling me that, that that thing is also now falling down too? <laughs> I just, We've had cursed I mic stands. Like today. I'm, I'm I'm just sinking into this. <laughs> somebody, so, uh, there we go. Somebody doesn't know how to tighten the knob. There we go, man. Apparently I don't know not. if I'll be able to sing the second tune, man. <laughs> Apparently, I am failing miserably. I told you guys neck. I'm turning 40. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep I you, told like, you to bring, down. Bring those good stands out, man. <laughs> <laughs> those are the good stands. No way. Bill, Mr. Bill Aldrich took all the good stands for himself this weekend. He left two, <laughs> and we're using them. <laughs> <laughs> I have failed in tightening. Mr. Yeah, there's a nice party up here on, uh, on a Friday. Yeah. yeah. A good old Third City Sound. Loft yeah. party. We okay. got a new logo painted on the wall. You guys will see it in the pictures and all the little videos I'm going to take for this episode. Awesome, man. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> um, when when did you first get to Chicago Street? Well, what was your first? I mean, how did you find that? I mean, you live close by enough, honestly. I think it was Chicago Farmer. Uh, uh, yes. I might have um, opened for him, probably, and then maybe pick some tunes with him that's that's usually a thing that i'll do when i play shows with him is i'll play an opening set and then play some tunes with him too so um uh, we did that a few times i'd love to see you two play together yeah. i really enjoy listening to him play no matter what so oh yeah he's great so then you you uh run in the same circles then of like ed anderson uh, do you ever play shows with uh, Miles Nielsen and the Rustin mm-hmm. Hart, all those guys? Yeah, yes, absolutely. In fact, in Rockford, Miles and I were doing a Thanksgiving show for many years downtown um, at different places. Um, what bar? Well, we we were uh, renting out this old place called the New American Theater, and then it changed its name to the Sullivan Center. Uh, and then there's another place, uh, Memorial Hall, where we were doing the last few ones at and it just uh you know those guys you know miles moved back to rockford and uh has really just kind of helped that scene blossom sure i mean um, yeah he could probably do that anywhere he wants to i'm sure yeah i mean and, th- and that band has grown a lot too and you know they just i know they were touring europe and you know so they're they're just really starting to find their stride i think that's awesome to hear yeah they're killer yeah no, um, and I'm embarrassed to ask a little bit, but had you ever played any Hop String Fest sets? I have. I I played one year. I played Hop String when it was like there was a lightning storm that blew yes. through. Yes. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> the mixing board blew up. It, oh. it blew up while I was playing my set. Sparks were flying out of it. Jesus. <laughs> that is a resume builder. <laughs> Holy right there. crap. I think that's why Tris never asked me back. <laughs> <laughs> you blew up my board, man. You were so good you blew up the board. What uh which was it the main stage or one of the side stages? I think it was the side stage. Uh, that was a that was a crazy year. If it was the same one that I am thinking few, about a few years ago, few maybe 3, 3 or 4 maybe. Three or 4, 4. Yeah. Cuz uh I also played at that one. Uh 
It was like my singer songwriter debut. It was it was terrible. Oh, because of all the the rain. Well, and I I also you know I'm not I'm, I'm a bass player man. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. the singer songwriter thing should be a hobby, and that's about it. And uh, so I got up to try and do my thing, and this that storm was blowing through. We had to go on. Um, the umbrella for the soundboard actually blew past us. Uh, the the tent was coming up. I was forgetting lyrics and mumbling, and my wife was trying to sing along with me, and I'm like mumbling. So she's like, "What are you doing?" Like, it was <laughs> it was a learning experience. Yeah. yeah, and this is before we started hanging out, so I'm kind of sad I missed that. Oh yeah, me too. I'm I missed sad. that hop string fest. I'm sad that nobody was watching the set while all that happened. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, but I've been playing down here. Uh, I don't know. If, like you know, like I said, every every few years I have to start saying another an- tack another decade on. But at least you know, ten years I think playing in Joliet. At- Dude, are you schooled for this? Because now you're, you so you found Joliet through Chicago Farmer. How did you meet Chicago Farmer? I met Cody. I probably met him at ISU. I went down to ISU okay. from 95 to 99, and he was down there, but we didn't really know each other at ISU. Um, we met more when I moved to Chicago, because uh, he moved to Chicago around the same time Okay, in the early 2000s. So yeah. <laughs> we were just all kind of hanging around Wicker Park and Bucktown and... Uh, you know, there was a place called the Tonic Room. I remember sure it had some open mics, and They're I used to kidding. actually host an open mic there. The whole first year I was in Chicago, I was hosting the open mic there. So I know that I thought that was cool when I walked in tonight and open mic was going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love every rec- Monday. Yeah, I love recording cool. on Mondays when the open mic night's going on. You get to kind of hear the music playing, and I just feels like all this stuff is going on. We're recording a show. There's open mic night. It's cool. It's cool, um, especially when it's all. Um, decent musicians and everyone's the corporations polite with each other and all that kind of stuff. I, I think you know uh, it's coming now. Uh oh, here it comes. <laughs> Today was the day of false starts. Yeah, right. Weird little glitches. Well, it's football season, so I'm all about the false starts. Oh boy. Oh. Boy. Did we lose the whole podcast? No, 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 no. <laughs> so Dave was going to signal the chimes for the end of the interview, but instead he signaled the. The intro. intro of the He's, show. He signaled the dudes, you're boring me to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I was like yammering and stammering. And this that was the best time to. No. <laughs> we we hit our goal. We're at the time we limit. We hit it. That was fast, though. We hit it. That was a good conversation. That flew by for me. All yeah. right, good. I'm so, happy. with all that madness in mind, hopefully we don't have any more mics dropping down on the ground or any of that kind of stuff. For Ernie's second song, what you got? Second song. All right, well, <clears throat> I have this other song that's new that kind of talks a little bit more about that whole thing of why we play music, why we do this. Um, yeah, All so right. it's called Only Do It For Love. The six o'clock train into the city Cost me six dollars and a half Heard a saxophone blowing on the corner Tossed a few coins into a hat Then stopped at my favorite record shop Spent my last couple bucks but I don't do it for the money I only do it for love Could have been a doctor or a lawyer Like my daddy always said Well if it don't to make this guitar play So much for making bread You may be living in the lap Of luxury But I will tell you when push comes to shove 
song ernie man thanks a lot for coming out really appreciate it we know yes, you've had you. a, a busy day thank you dudes dave thank you for all that you do behind the soundboard messing things up that's all right we did great yeah it was fine we'd also like to thank bill aldrich for letting us use the studio week after week here at third city sound on the third floor above our favorite pub chicago street pub run by kathy and mike trisna I hope Kathy, you... I like to call her Kathy Trisna. <laughs> <laughs> this has been What's Going Down in Downtown J-Town.